the the quest for Planet Nine from Cosmos Games. Uh, so it's a three to five player game, ages ten and up, playtime about twenty minutes. A strategy. It says it's about a four out of five strategy, and teamwork five out of five. So definitely full on co op. You need to work together. Right here it says co op trick taking card game. So for for any of those who don't know what trick taking is, trick taking. Um, the more classic, well-known trick-taking style of games are going to be Spades, Hearts, and then, of course, there's more games in the hobby that are trick-taking, like Gudetama, and uh, another game I want to open tonight is Macaron, is trick-taking. Hmm. What else is... Uh, but trick-taking, typically, you're going to find in smaller card games sitting around a table, uh, but there's not many co-op ones. Give me a moment. So this is the fun thing. I live in an apartment, and right outside my door, I share a wall with the mailboxes, and being metal and it's loud. Sometimes it's noisy, so I do apologize for that. We'll hang out a moment. Well, whoever is out there checking or dropping off mail is done. And we'll get back to what we're doing here. I think they're done. Sound like they they went outside. So I get to edit this out later on YouTube. Not a problem. But again, this is the crew of the Quest for Planet 9 from Cosmos. Let's cut this open. Like we said, it's gonna be three to five players. Ages 10 and up. That should play in about 20 minutes. High strategy, high teamwork. There is a co op trick taking style card game. Now, this is typically something I don't notice often with games, or at least game boxes, but. The print artwork on this box is offset, and so it, it wrapped unevenly. You can see from corner to corner, it shifted. First notice it on this corner, because this part came across this facing. You don't see that often, the, the misprint on the actual box. Occasionally you find it on a card or a rule book, but not, it won't affect the gameplay at all because it's on the box and I won't care that much so it won't bother me but it's just an interesting thing I, I just noticed we've got the crew uh, rule book right on top again as we expect to find we're going to have a punch before yay we get to punch something to death the crew the quest for playing now that at first glance feels like a thick rule book for a small card game so we'll see what's up with that real quick so it says start reading here, start playing from page 11, okay? So you open it up, relatively easy to read. Uh, talks about game materials, talks about it being co-op, mission-based, trick-taking. Let's see, talks about trump cards, communication in the game, uh, like what you can talk about with other players. Looks like there's little sidebars in here as reminders and clarification points. Mission prep, mission sequences, little examples over here. That continues on with that same type of stuff. Uh, it talks about difficulty, uh, help mechanics, explanation of symbols. Uh, Continues on playing with five players if there's rule changes, playing with two players, any changes, tips, variants, challenge for three players. Uh, talks about the author and credits right here. Now, upside down, an epilogue. Um, wonder if you actually. Okay. If you turn the rule book over and turn it around, we have a, rule, a log book. So first read the rules to do so and return over the logbook. So I'm going to check this out. So the, uh, yeah, this logbook 
uh, has the different missions and then how well you do them apparently quite a few pages of these I won't go over all of them and then a little epilogue so interesting way to do the rule book make sure it's it's easy to find certain things so you don't have to flip through the whole book to find those mission logs so that's that's a good way to do that a little bit of glare there we go okay now we got a punch board it's, it's a single board let's see how well this is going to punch it looks like it's printed on both sides decent thickness cardboard uh, let's see how thick that is maybe two millimeter give or take okay now it's gonna pause the music and we're gonna attempt to get this snap on microphone because we like to listen to how well they snap because it's not just what they look like. You can hear quality half the time. Let's see what we get. Not bad, not bad little soft on that pretty nice clean snaps they're, they're um, punching pretty easily uh, looks like it's very cleanly cut through I've had not none of these pieces are trying to catch yet uh, with for potential tears and it looks like each of these has uh, several uh, very small tabs on them to hold them in place but overall it was a, a well fit but fully cut piece as you can even see on the back side how well it was cut so these right here looks like they're cut together should just all start falling apart yeah that shows how well they are cut So you had those little tabs that were trying to hold it in, but that was about it. And then our last piece. That's two pieces. So that, that's probably a standy style. And that punch board can go to the punch uh, board pile for later. Now we can get music back on now. So I assume these two pieces are going to end up going together for a simple standy as such. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. So each of these looks like blank back. Um, potentially you mix them. That's why they're nothing on the back. We'll see once we have a chance to play. Like I said, I've never played, so I don't know the rules. I'm just commenting on the components I'm finding. Now these are double-sided red and green. Little astronaut style helmet looks like a satellite printed on one side only uh, now this astronaut was double side printed so that's a nice bonus now we got some packs of cards we'll pull out and bring over to our detail camera and switch our view to make it a little bit easier two packs um, I'm going to start with the smaller deck so I'm going to put the big one aside and see what we got here so of course first we're going to check for a quick pull okay it is not our standard quick pull line like gold gold line but you can see a thumb cut basically right here where that plastic starts to pull away so that's nice that they did that so then you don't again I don't like it when they don't have anything because I don't want to take a knife to the actual card package because I always risk cutting a card on accident. So the backs of these appear to all be the same. A nice, I kind of want to just say blue moon, but we know it's not a moon, or, but it's a nice uh, blue glow coming around. That artwork, same as, and you'll find that same artwork on the box cover, but just there's actual extra on the top of the box cover with that 
So these appear to be numbered. So colored, we got, uh, I can fit it right there. Uh, one through nine in that blue background. We got some uh, green cards. Looks like pink. And we also have orange. So one through nine for each one uh, times four. It's gonna be like 36 cards. Pretty straightforward and simple. Nothing over the top, exuberant, exaggerant, whatever you wanna call uh, the best word for that. Uh, simple cards, um, not the thickest. So I would be mindful if you're going to play with this a lot, there's a risk for bending. I don't know if you prefer to sleep your cards. This may be one of those cards you do that with, or games you sleep the cards with. Okay, now we got our bigger cards now. Let's find that quick tear on here. A lot of times this uh, standard size card, you're gonna find the tear, uh, tear out on the side, which it looks like it is right here. I can see the edge of it. Part of it, my lighting glares off this plastic so it does make it harder to see. Oh, that's a quirk tear. I thought it was. I'm seeing a line. Do it closer. Well, not the quick tear I thought it was, but it's still tearing. Because it seems to be wanting to tear down the seam. So it just they didn't completely seal the side of the the deck on this one. Okay, let's see different backs. Okay, so we're gonna have those backs and then again the blue deep space style backing on those. Let's start with these. Okay. So again we have color sets of blue green pink and orange with some additional cards. Looks like rocket style ships. Each uh, looks like each number actually has a slightly different artwork style. It looks like a, a one booster. You can see the different number of boosters on it. Three main ones. A lot of them. So it does, and then of course number it on those. And then these cards are double-sided, the exact same artwork. So they, they may end up being uh, placement style cards that uh, create a, a, a quasi board or central area where you're moving around or placing cards under. I'd have to see the rules, of course. Um, yeah, those are just double sided. Don't know which direction they'll work. Supposed to be. But yeah, that's what we have in the box. And the box itself has a very simplified. Uh, it is colored, it does have artwork uh, insert. Uh, just basically fits cards side by side. So I'll switch back, pack this up. We can move on to our next one. Our cards can fit there. I did fit sideways. They fit sideways here. I'll probably want. Is a ziplock or something of some sort for the cards eventually and all these components. Let's see if these cards fit sideways in this. Not there. Uh, that won't do much. Yeah, overall, not great options. I'm not sure what their intent was for this layout. Uh, I'm gonna try this. The cards on bottom.
do that and put wood look on top. And then knowing I'm likely to stand on that end. See how that fared. This will be the main determining factor if I need zip locks for cards. If we got too much sliding. Okay. If we keep these cards at the bottom, they won't slide too much. It looks like the rule book was tight enough that we didn't get slippage of these pieces. I think it'll be okay for now. Now hopefully I get a chance to play this soon.